Greek Orthodox Telecommunications presents Illuminations. Today's program, March 25th, Greek Independence Day. Greece, the southeastern part of the European continent, is easily remembered by someone who has seen its wild mountainous terrain or its golden coastline. It is described as a passageway of nations or as the birthplace of democracy. It is revered for the gifts it presented to mankind way back in the times of Pericles and the Golden Age of Athens. Epic poetry, art, drama, history, philosophy, mathematics, and the formulation of the principles of a democratic government. Since the end of the classical era, the Greek nations saw their military power falter. The citizens of Greece had to become accustomed to foreign rule. Greece, however, continued to shine its lights onto the rest of the world. Even her very conquerors, as in the case of the Roman Empire, once they were acquainted with Greek culture, they were in turn conquered by it. Foreign rulers changed through the years, but Greece never ceased to be the center of scientific, cultural and religious quests and developments. It was in Greece where the teachings of Jesus Christ found a first foothold in Europe. The fusion of the Gospel's message with the reason and humanity of the Greeks eventually formed the basis of Christian religion as it is known today. And it was through Greece that Christianity spread to Europe, mainly because of the use of the Greek language that served as the international language of the time, as well as the association with the Byzantine Empire, which finally adopted Christianity as a state religion and subsequently strengthened its position. The Byzantine Empire started out as the eastern part of the Roman Empire, but slowly transformed to a state primarily based on the Greek mainland, ruled by emperors who used Greek as the official state language. During its lengthy 11th century life, the Byzantine state showed a particular interest in the preservation of ancient Greek culture. Champion of that cause was the Orthodox Church, who helped preserve the classical heritage through the centuries. Although the Byzantine Empire held within its borders many different nations, it was the land of Greece and its people that constituted its main body, and it was on that very land of Greece where Byzantium left its final breath. After fighting desperately for its life, it fell victim to the force of the expanding Ottoman Empire in 1453. The fall of Constantinople, the capital of once mighty Byzantium, brought to an end the history of a state that shone gloriously for 11 centuries. This ultimate defeat signaled for the Greek Orthodox Church and the Greek nation the start of a long period of subjugation to a ruthless Turkish rule. A, a Turk could come in and if he uh, liked your wife, he could carry her off. Uh, the best land was uh, owned by the Turks and the Greeks uh, were uh, given uh, 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 inferior land to farm. So you have to remember, people were uh, agrarian, the majority of the individuals at the time. And uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, the Greeks had to wear a distinctive dress. Uh, they were really second-class citizens in their own country uh, and uh, uh, lived at the mercy of um, whatever uh, overlord happened to be in the general vicinity. For the next four centuries, the Greeks attempted to regain their freedom several times, but every attempt failed for lack of organization and wider support. Every unsuccessful attempt, however, galvanized the spirit of the people and reaffirmed the intense feeling of nationhood that prevailed among Greeks of all classes. 
This feeling derived from their common language, from their common Christian faith, and from the consciousness of being under an alien and repressive rule. It also derived from the church, which initiated clandestine educational efforts that helped preserve the ancient heritage and the cultural and linguistic unity of the nation. The major contribution of the church in the main maintenance of the self-consciousness of the Greeks that they constituted the nation was that they, they provided the institutions and the leadership which are always necessary for the maintenance of group solidarity of any given group in society and they did so for some 400 years with considerable foresight with considerable practical sense when it came to everyday matters of dealing with Turkish authorities and with some vision as to the future. At the same time, the messages of the Enlightenment about equality and brotherhood among men that started arriving from Western Europe intoxicated the Greeks with a growing desire for national freedom. Rigas Ferreos, an 18th century Greek activist who was trying to raise awareness in Europe about the Greek cause, expressed the feelings of every enslaved Greek when he wrote his martial hymn. Kalitera mnyasoras elefteri zoi, para saranda chronia sklavia kefilaki. Folk legend has it that the revolution started in the monastery of Agia Lavra in the northern part of the Peloponnesus Peninsula. According to the legend, the Metropolitan Bishop of Patras, Hermanos, raised the flag of the revolution in front of the assembled primates and chieftains of the region and urged them to swear loyalty to the sacred fight for the freedom of their nation. The ultimate goal was set. Freedom or death. The date was the 25th of March, 1821. It was on that very same day that the Greek Orthodox Church honors the Annunciation of the Virgin Mary. Now March 25th, or the Annunciation of the Virgin Mary, from a biblical and theological point of view, is the occasion when Mary of Nazareth, the mother of Jesus, received the calling and the annunciation from God by way of one of the angels of God, the Archangel Gabriel, who announced to her, or presented her, if you will, with the choice to become the representative of all of humanity in the great economy of God's salvation by accepting to give birth to Jesus. In the Orthodox Christian conscience and understanding, this is one of the great and most significant feast days of the year because it, on the one hand, exalts the, the, the role and the person of Mary, and at the same time, establishes and clearly confirms from a theological point of view, the humanity of Jesus. He was indeed conceived by, in, uh, by the Holy Spirit and, and with Mary, and was brought to full term and was born for our salvation. Although military operations had started on the 21st of March, and historians point out that the assembly in the monastery took place a fortnight before, it is the 25th day of March which by tradition is celebrated as the beginning of the Greek Revolution. The reason why the Greeks celebrate 25th of March as the um, uh, day of Greek independence, the anniversary of, the Greek, of Greek independence, is because uh, it's, the day, it's a religious holiday, the Annunciation of Virgin Mary, uh, uh, Evangelist Moses Theodoku, uh, when Mary was, uh, Virgin Mary was given the good news of, um, uh, going, of uh, bearing the, uh, Jesus Christ, and there is a parallel there between the birth of Jesus and the birth of the Greek nation, the rebirth of the Greek nation. And the, this um, has been very important in a way, subsequently, in the way uh, people felt, and even at the time there was a, a desire to make it coincide with that date. Of from the outbreak of the revolution, the different chieftains used various flags and banners to lead their men in battle. 
a common motif prevailed. The cross, in different sizes, shapes and colors, serving as a reminder of the Greek's common faith and as an invocation of divine intervention for the fulfillment of their goals. In 1822, however, the newly formed Greek parliament adopted the official flag of the country. Nine horizontal stripes, five blue and four white, with a white cross over a blue background on the upper left corner. The blue and white lines symbolized the ever-present motif in Greek life, the wavy sea. The cross was the symbol of Christianity. This was the ultimate recognition by the Greek state of the importance of their faith to the outcome of the fight. Eight years of bitter and bloody battles followed. Eight years that produced a new pantheon of heroes who would eventually take their place in Greek legend alongside the likes of Hercules, Achilles and Ulysses. They were chieftains of the mountain-based freedom fighters, the Armatoli Kekleftes, like Kolokotronis, Andruchos and Karaiskakis. They were noblemen like the Ypsilanti brothers, Alexandros and Dimitrios, who abandoned their high government offices in Russia to go and fight for the homeland. They were merchants like Canaris and Miaulis, who turned their ships over to the revolution, becoming inspirational naval leaders. They were anonymous heroes, like the women of Suli, who chose death before dishonor. They held their children tightly and jumped off the cliffs of Zalongo after their men had been killed in battle. They were clergymen, like the patriarch of Constantinople, Gregorius V, who was murdered by the Turks as a punishment and warning for the Greeks who wanted to join the fight. or like the priest Papa Flesses, who served as a minister in the revolutionary Greek government and eventually gave his life in the trenches, fighting for the freedom of his country. And they were the Philelines, friends of Greece, who came from faraway lands to join in the fight for Greek independence. The revolt in Greece really captured the imagination of people throughout the world, both in Western Europe and uh, in the United States. Um, uh, people, you have to remember at that time in the uh, early uh, 19th century, in the uh, 1800s, uh, a classical education was really quite common for uh, individuals who even just uh, went to uh, high school. And so people were familiar with the ancient Greeks. And then suddenly, in uh, the, their newspapers, uh, they began to read about uh, the ancestors of these glorious ancient Greeks that they had heard so much about in school. Uh, fighting for their freedom and trying to create a new, uh, new Greece, uh, a new Greek state. And immediately to their mind, uh, it reminded them of uh, Pericles and uh, the, the um, ideals of, of uh, ancient uh, Hellas. Uh, and this was very romantic and very exciting and really fired the imagination of a lot of people. And uh, one of the interesting things about the revolution, uh, the, the revolt, uh, uh, was that uh, people from uh, all over Europe volunteered and came to Greece to fight. The most famous Philhellene was perhaps Baron George Gordon Noel Byron. An English poet and satirist, he first visited Greece in 1809 and instantly fell in love with the land that inspired his Grecian poems. After the outbreak of the revolution, he returned to Greece in 1824 and worked with its political leaders to unify the divergent Greek forces. He unfortunately contracted a fever and died in Mesolonghi the same year. Till the time of his death, Byron was held in such great respect by everybody in Greece that the revolutionary government had even invited him to become governor general of the country. Byron's involvement in the Greek independence war helped awaken the European public opinion in favor of the fighting Greeks, 
who mourned sincerely the loss of a true friend of their nation. The mountains look on Marathon, and Marathon looks on the sea, and musing there an hour alone, I dreamed that Greece might still be free, for standing on the Persian's grave, I could not deem myself a slave. In the history and historical experience of practically every modern nation, there are usually two or three very central events in the history of that people which help symbolize their unity and their distinctive character from all other peoples and which reflects the most important events as they understand them in their history. In the history of the modern Greeks, there are two such dates which we celebrate annually and which are celebrated by Greeks all over the world no matter whether they're Greeks in the diaspora of Australia or of South Africa or of Europe or Greeks in Greece proper and these two days are the celebration of Greek Easter the day of the resurrection of Christ and the second is of course the celebration of the onset or the outbreak of the Greek Revolution on March 25th in 1821, when a massive struggle was launched that finally ended successfully in the establishment of an independent Greece made up of Greeks who were independent politically and who held the political fate of their future in their own hands. The Greek state that emerged from the War of 1821 declared March 25th a national holiday. Celebrations commemorating Greek Independence Day are held in every city and village of Greece, but also in every corner of this world where Greeks are to be found. Each year at March 25th, uh, we will find that our church communities bring out the children, the Greek school teachers, the priests, the uh, community in general will have a particular observance and celebration. This is mandated by our archdiocese, uh, which is after all the, the, the source of our unity here in this country, the expression of our unity. and. One will observe that in the church halls and in the church itself, along with the celebration of the Feast of the Annunciation, uh, a number of uh, ethnic observances will be, will be held as well. Greek costumes, Greek dancing, uh, there's often a meal, uh, the recitation of poetry, the reading of some, uh, uh, some statements, if you will, about the meaning of Greek independence and of March 25th as a religious and an ethnic holiday. Step aside, rock, so I can pass. The valiant wave demands angrily from the rock at the seashore. Step off my chest, which was dead and cold, since the dark north wind nestled inside of it. My arms are not just waves or the fury of the tempest. I am a river of blood. I am strengthened by the curse of the people who grew tired, of the people who said, now rock, you shall fall. Your time of terror has come. Wave, why are you bothering me with threats? Who are you who dares not refresh me, lull me to sleep with your song and wash my feet with your cool waters? You dare stand in front of me, crowned with foam? Whoever might you be, you'd better take notice. I don't die easily. Rock, my name is revenge. I've been fed through time with bitterness and contempt. I've been brought up by pain. I was but a teardrop, and now behold, I am the wide sea. Fall on your knees, bow to me. The rock fell silent. The wave with its force crashes onto its hollow body and sunk it deep into the sea. 
lost in the abyss, the rock twists, crashes, melts, as if it were made of snow. On the day of the Annunciation, our country Greece and our great mother has a double beauty. With a lily to the virgin, an angel arrives flying and addresses her, Hail, you who Jesus makes his mother. And on that very same day, we awaken with our freedom, and all of us, young and old, Hail, O Greece, we sing. March 25th holds for the Greeks the same significance with which Americans regard the 4th of July. Both dates mark the Declaration of Independence and the birth of two nations who fought passionately for their freedom. Two nations who shared the same convictions about man's inalienable rights on this earth. When American people fought for democracy, self-determination, and freedom of expression, they felt very close to the people who had first presented these very same concepts to the world. In a letter sent to the celebrated scholar and patriot Adamandius Korais, Thomas Jefferson expressed the feelings of Americans about the Greek Revolution. No people sympathize more feelingly than ours with the sufferings of your countrymen, and no one offers more sincere and ardent prayers to heaven for their success. Encouraged by the achievements of the American people since the declaration of their independence, the newborn Greek parliament appealed to the American nation in the name of their shared love for liberty, requesting their assistance in the struggle they had just begun. They were Americans who came from um, far away um, uh, uh, America, across the sea, uh, to fight uh, on behalf of the Greeks. One of the uh, most uh, famous was uh, a, a doctor, a surgeon, uh, by the name of Dr. Um, uh, Gridley Howe, who uh, had, had studied at Brown University and was a surgeon and, and saved many lives throughout the uh, Greek uh, war for um, uh, liberation. Uh, the American government, built, um, I believe, several ships um, which on behalf of the, uh, the Greeks, because the Greeks needed monetary assistance. But by far, the contribution that the, uh, that the United States made to the war was monetary. Following in the steps of their ancestors, modern Americans do not forget to pay tribute to the Greek Independence Day. In 1987, President Ronald Reagan proclaimed the 25th of March a national day of celebration of Greek and American democracy. It is done. Thank you very much. Well done. I am particularly pleased that this resolution communicates our lasting debt of gratitude to the people of Greece and all people of Greek heritage for the democratic ideals which inspired the founding of our own nation. During the brief period since the rebirth of the nation, Greece and her people have participated in the world's fights for freedom and democracy, often paying a heavy price.
It is, however, perceived as their duty and destiny. For they have always carved their path in history, motivated by their ultimate ideal, liberty. The Greeks' struggle for freedom inspired the national anthem, which was written by Greece's first modern poet laureate, Dionysios Solomos. Well, I know thee by the edge of thy terror-striking brand, know thee by the piercing glance that thou dartest o'er the land. From the sacred ashes rising of the Hellenes, great and free, valiant as in olden ages, hail, all hail, O liberty. The preceding program was brought to you in part by grants from Amic Enterprises Incorporated, National Greek Orthodox Ladies Philophthos Society, the Michael Jaharis Foundation, the Gus and Nick Karos Fund, the Dr. and Mrs. John Collis Fund, and Craig and Lang Incorporated. This has been a Greek Orthodox telecommunication production.